we're looking at a fitness tracker app that uses React Hook Form and D&D Kit for drag and drop. Right now, it's buttery smooth, but it wasn't smooth at first. Typing into inputs had a noticeable lag, and the drag and drop had up to an 8 second lag. Very janky. So today, I'll show a few simple optimizations that took this app from frustrating to a smooth response. Okay, we're in VS Code, and nothing will make the need to optimize your code stand out really more than implementing drag and drop because of how many times drag and drop re-renders. So I'm going to use this use renders hook to show the render count directly on the page for each row of that workout form. Let's check it out as I go back to Chrome, and you can see I've got six renders here already on every item, each row of these workout items, and that's just from loading the page. Now let me go ahead and move things around a little bit and we can quickly see the one I'm moving is going to render a lot. The others are going to render quite a few more times. We've got 30 renders now on each item, but the one I moved is up to 590. So if you can imagine this row rendering 590 times, and then each of these other rows rendering 20 plus more times just when you move one item in your list around through the drag and drop. Again, this is D&D Kit. But if you can imagine all of that, you really have to have these items render efficiently or there's going to be some lag. It's going to make your app janky. So let's go back to VS Code and look at what I fixed to make this app as smooth as it is even though we're rendering so many times. And the first issue we're going to tackle are these drop down select menus that you see here for current weight and for next weight and they're in each row. So we've got two select menus in each row for each exercise. Okay, back in VS Code, the first issue we have is each of those drop menus for the weights go up to 450. So you can select anything from zero to 450. We needed an array with those values, and actually, this is an array of objects, so you're going to have an ID with the value, and then also a description with the value, and that's because of how select options work when you have a select input. You need both of those things. Now, if I just created the component at first and did this inside of the component, it would have to recreate this array every time. Now you might be thinking about what about use memo, if I could use the use memo hook. Well, I will use that as I'll show you here in the future for when we actually populate the menu. But this is a static value. It's always going to be that selection of zero to 450. So one way to do this is just create a separate file, create that value, and then it's only created once. So you can import this weight options array directly into the weight dropdown component, which leads me to the second issue. If we just created that back in the form and created each of those inputs, we would be having a duplication in our code. We had one for the current weight and then one for the next recommended weight. It's better to create a reusable component that you can memoize. So we abstract that, or we actually extract that, I should say, from that form, and then we create a reusable component that can be used in both places. So when we look at our exercise row code, you can see I have the weight dropdown component here, and the title is current weight, and it gets a different ID in our dynamic React hook form inputs, and then as I scroll down, we have that weight dropdown component once again. Now this is for the next weight, and it gets a different ID based on the exercise ID and a tag value. Now, both of these can be used and memoized, and so that also helps speed up the whole process. Now let's look at this component and see what else we did. Since it's part of React Hook Form, this isn't really an optimization, but it's something you would do when you extract a component from the form, and of course then it has its own file. You want to have the use form context so you can pull in those values and we get the control. So that's part of it. But what you want to do to actually optimize this is one, use React memo, or you might be used to seeing React.memo. You can see here I just imported memo, and we memoize the entire component. Now, if you know about React.memo, it takes a comparison function, and we can look at our props here, 
and we can come down to the end of the component, you can see this comparison function. We can just, of course, regenerate the component or re-render the component if these props change. So we're just comparing those in the comparison function. But the other thing we do is then use the use memo hook, and this is where we generate the select options for those weight dropdowns. So they are memoized and they won't regenerate on every re-render. So hopefully we don't even get to this part that we've memoized the component and our title and really the name of the input in our form won't be changing. We just memoize the whole thing. Now what does this help with? Well, it helps a lot because we were counting up to 450 from zero every time. So think about all of those renders we were doing. First, we were generating an array that wasn't memoized. And then, of course, we were populating each dropdown as well. So that's counting to 451, essentially, three times from zero to 450 on every render. So that really slowed things down. So this is one optimization that sped everything up. So what did we learn from this? One, if you have some static values that are dynamically generated still, because I didn't want to create an array, although you could with 450 objects, what I did was dynamically generate this, but I import it. And importing that file makes sure it's only generated once. So that's essentially memoizing this array. After that, when we populate those menus, we also use memo on that so it doesn't continually regenerate those select items inside of that select input. And finally, we memoize that component we extracted out of the form, and then it is only regenerated if the title and the name change because of that comparison function. Looking once again at the app, the settings that we optimized for the weights, that really helped out. But it's not everything I needed to do. I also needed to look at this column that had the different settings for each exercise. Because this is a field that contains an array in our React hook form, and this requires mapping over the array to create multiple dynamic inputs. And recreating these inputs by mapping over the settings array on every render also created a performance issue. And now back in VS Code, I just wanted to show this form field here where I did not actually extract a separate component. This is just still in the regular form file for the exercise row or the master form essentially. So I did not extract a component for the text area that has the exercise notes, for example. But we can see the form field and there is a render method as we use the control from React hook form. Now this render method is a callback function right here. And we get the field comes into this function and we can use those values here. So you see I'm using that in the text area. Well, let's look at this exercise settings input file that I have. And notice this form field, I still have the control. And of course I'm using the use form context here to get the control now that we're in a separate file. Here's the render method and here's the field coming in. But what I had to do was extract the input here into a separate field inputs component. And there's a reason for that. As we went over that array, we didn't want it to re-render every time. So I wanted to use the use memo hook. And we scroll up here and I just created the field inputs component in the same file because I'm only going to use it in this component below that is the exercise settings input. So in this same component, I created or in the same file, I created the field inputs component, and you can see it accepts the name, the value, and the on change function that we get from React hook form. If we scroll back down, you can see those passed in. Notice two of these, the value and the on change, come from having the field here that is passed in to the render method of the input for React hook form. So this has to happen inside of this render method to have the field to reference. And we pass the field value and the field dot on change method here into the field inputs component. The reason we needed to do this and extract a component is we cannot use use memo inside of that render method if we were to just type this code out and not extract it. It actually needs to be in its own function. And now after we extract it and define fields, 
And of course we can use Memo as we map over everything so it doesn't happen on each render. After we create all of that, we actually get our fields value that we can return from the field inputs component. And now we have it here in the return as part of our unordered list. And that of course lets us memoize these values instead of recreating them on every render. But the important part to note is we couldn't do this without extracting this component. If you just tried to put use memo itself inside of the callback down here on React Hook form, you would have an issue. And with those optimizations in place, I'm now able to drag these exercise rows as part of the workout form and everything is nice and smooth. All in all, many developers build first and optimize later, and I admit I'm the same. React is already very efficient and so is React Hook form. But nevertheless, some inefficiencies in your code can lead to frustrating user experiences. If you can imagine trying to grab one of these items and drag it and then just waiting and waiting before it became active, that would be very frustrating indeed for a user. So applying a drag and drop library like D&D Kit can really make those inefficiencies stand out if you're trying to drag something that is re-rendering this many times. And when you find those inefficiencies, I hope examples like I've shown today will help you out. I know this isn't every optimization possible, but these are things that might come up as you create an app. So once again, I hope this video has helped. A quick shout out to my patrons. Holy Coder is a progress provider and my junior patrons, Programming Polyglot, Isaac, Will, Ernie, Georgie, Mitch, Stacy, Scott, Abe, Javier, Michael, Thank you very much. You're helping me reach my goals. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.